welcome everyone to this um, third uh, digital session of um, 2022. Thank you all for, uh, for joining. Um, today's topic is on uh, non-traditional ways of uh, media creation. Um, we have uh, managed to, to find uh, two very interesting uh, uh, speakers for that, um, as you see on, on the slide here. But uh, first, I wanted to uh, briefly introduce um, the, the digital sessions as such, and myself and my, my colleague Filipino as well. So my name is Marnik. I'm a project manager at Close the Gap. Uh, we're working on digitalization in uh, developing countries, mainly by um, offering uh, use ICT equipment um, after refurbishments to um, social proje uh, projects and, and educational uh, and entrepreneurial initiatives in the south. Um, we have uh, created the digital sessions in uh, 2021 to, um, you know, stimulate uh, organizations and also individuals on um, uh, in development cooperation uh, on uh, digitalization because we believe it can be a, a powerful enabler for more impact in uh, the projects that we all um, are engaged in. And uh, we do this in collaboration with uh, Enable, and that's why um, I'd like my uh, my colleague uh, Philippine to uh, briefly take the floor and introduce herself. Thank you, Marnik, and good afternoon to, to everyone. Um, I'm really glad that we can um, organize this session uh, this afternoon about a really interesting topic, actually. And I'm really interested to discover what our, our speakers today will tell us about that. Um, and I have to say that this is the last session um, before summer, but uh, we will uh, start again in September, maybe under a new concept. But if you have any other topic or any other ideas to share with us, we are, of course, available to um, discuss with you. We are really open to discussions. So please uh, feel free to reach us um, after that session. And I leave the floor to my um, co-host today, Marnik. Good luck and good luck to our speakers. Thank you so much, uh, Philippine. Um, yeah, so uh, as uh, Philippine mentioned, indeed, it's going to be the last uh, edition before the summer period, and then we'll be, uh, you know, evaluating and uh, making sure that when we come back in September, we have a very uh, strong concept um, that's even more, um, let's say, an appetite uh, with, uh, with our audience. Um, for this uh, session, important to um, note is that uh, uh, Philippine already um, uh, raised it, but um, we want to be very participatory, and so uh, we ask uh, everyone um, uh, to really join in on the discussion after the presentation. So in terms of structure, we'll have um, Florence um, from, uh, yeah, maybe it's better to, to first go into the subject and then afterwards uh, <laughs> go into the, the practical details. Uh, so first of all, we have uh, Florence uh, Cézé from uh, Media Matters for Women uh, with us today. Um, who will be talking about uh, her work in Sierra Leone specifically, and, and uh, I think in more in general, the work of, of Media Matters for Women. Um, and secondly, we um, have uh, Bart uh, Vetsevens from uh, Comundos, a Belgian uh, um, uh, yeah, ISDL uh, NGO working on um, a storytelling, digital storytelling, among others, uh, who both shared their experiences with us. Uh, before we can give them the floor, um, I wanted to uh, point out that, um, again, that we want to be uh, very participatory. And so we ask you to uh, to intervene and ask any questions that uh, might pop up uh, during the Q&A, but also during um, the, the session uh, or the presentation themselves. You can um, uh, ask questions in the chat so that we can address them afterwards. Um, be aware that we are uh, taping this, um, uh, recording this uh, session. So if uh, um, you know, you're not feeling comfortable with speaking up, but then um, you can just ask a question to the chat and we'll uh, address it for you. But otherwise, we'll give you the floor and you can also elaborate on it orally and then uh, explain uh, your question a bit more in depth. Um, you see here the ground rules for uh, for partaking in the in the discussions, but uh, I'm sure uh, uh, most of you um, have you know, been, been in these types of um, set, uh, sessions or, or webinars before and so you know how it works. Uh, I think, yeah, without further ado, I can um, ask uh, Florence from uh, Media Matters for Women to, uh, to take the floor and, and give us their, uh, the first presentation of today's topic. Florence, the floor is yours. Share your thank presentation. Thank you very much. And, uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Welcome. And thank you to all the people in this um, platform watching us. It's a privilege and um, I feel really honored um, Media Matters for Women. We are a non-governmental organization and we operate in Sierra Leone, West Africa. Would you, sorry, country for now, that is... Um, would, you, would you mind first, yes, uh, sharing, your, first sharing your screen, uh, please, with the presentation? 
You know, get in my screen. Sorry? You know, have in my screen. Uh, no, not for the moment. I'll stop sharing at least. That's already a good start. If you want, I can also um, yes. put on the, the presentation if you prefer. You'd like me to uh, to present and then you just tell me when to uh, go to the next slide? Okay, let me just go back. Maybe uh, for the audience, uh, we also have Lisa uh, Sabri from uh, Media Matters for Women. I believe you're based in the UK, uh, Lisa? I am, yeah. And I'm just here for backup in case of uh, internet issues. <laughs> That's very kind of you, Lisa. Thank so, you so much. Are you? Yeah, if you are. You uh, having go, my screen now? Yeah, if Should you go, I go for a slideshow? full screen. Yeah, yes, please. And then you're good to go, Florence. Thanks so much. So, okay. So Media Matters for Women is a non-governmental organization and um, we operate in Sierra Leone. And um, we bridge the information gap at last mile communities. Sierra Leone is a very impoverished nation where women have the highest literacy level. And most of these women are left with little or no information about their rights, their bodies, and how to make informed choices. So Media Matters for Women, we bridge that information gap. We go at the community level and make sure we carry the information together with the community people. And um, we um, go to the next, next slide, we connect with rural communities and rural women and girls in terms of information and services. And how do we go about it? We have professional journalists and these journalists work with the community structures. We have traditional religious leaders, community leaders, youth leaders, and these people are very influential in change. So we work together with them in terms of information. We look at the informational level of issues that are affecting them. And together we discuss these issues and journalists design podcasts and translate these podcasts into their local languages. These podcasts are used for them to make informed choices, for them to know where to go for services, and also for them to take or ask for accountability. And um, we distribute our podcast in rural communities by our field staff. As I told you earlier, we work with our community structures and MMW is one key organization that includes the traditional structures within our program and distribution network. There are very key people called the town criers. These are influencers of change. They are used within the community structures to disseminate information. And we are using our innovation, trying to bring innovative ways through the community structures, teaching them and providing them with technology and equipment that is easy for them to transfer and disseminate information. And we work with other local CBUs, wherein these are, are listening centers. They have youth who are very influenced. They can influence change within their communities. They are trained as local advocates on issues such as SRHR, sexual and reproductive health, SGBV, sexual and gender-based violence, women's rights, um, female genital mutilation, so many topics. And these people are there to ensure that the message is being carried at their community level. And also they support women 
who need services. So we have a very collective um, um, network of service delivery and we support women so that they can benefit from these services. And we use community um, um, radio stations, wherein the issues that are being distributed and discussed are also discussed at community level. And for us, the key people within our production and distribution is our journalists. They interface with the communities. They interface with the local people. And then the listening centers, wherein it serves as a resource center, where you can go if you are pregnant, you can go there and you can listen to our podcasts. And these podcasts are, they come in a very friendly way, an interesting way, which is translated into their local languages. And we do not only look at, you know, the, the, the platforms where you can access the information. Our town criers and youth advocates go out on outreach sessions where they meet women at their farms, at their, their market areas, you know, where they do their normal day-to-day -day business. They meet them there and discuss this podcast. So in our operational areas in Sierra Leone, we work, as I told you earlier, in very hard to reach communities. And the most interesting and encouraging our outcome of our podcast is we have high numbers of listeners. We've hit, when we started, we started with close to 5,000, 3,000, you know, but as we grow every day, we are hitting over 60,000 listeners per month. And these women rely on our information in terms of making informed choices. And we cover areas in Sierra Leone, which is the Eastern part of Sierra Leone, to be specific, Kenema, the Northern part, Bombali, Western Rural, Waterloo, Northwest, which we just started, Karine, and we work with several partners within this um, uh, partnership to strengthen partnership. And we also look at, um, um, we have a core staff wherein we have the m &E section, we have the community liaison, and we also have a very um, um, robust financial structure. So MMW, we believe in addressing the issues of women and girls, especially in hard to reach communities. And we feel very proud to continue to do what we are doing. And one of our biggest hope is to cover the entire country and to reach out to other neighboring countries, which we share borders with. We share the same social cultural values and the need to operate in these countries are very, um, is really important. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Florence. That was uh, really interesting. I have a couple of questions written down. Um, I invite everyone to also uh, already start uh, asking your questions in the chat if they'd like, but we're first uh, going to uh, uh, to Bart Wetzepens from uh, Comundos, of course, who will uh, share his uh, expertise with us uh, today. Bart, the floor is yours. You can uh, start sharing your screen. Normally you should be able to take over from uh, Florence without issue. And then afterwards, when you unmute yourself, we should be able to hear you as well. I can unmute myself and now I will share. Great, thanks. Sorry. Can you see my screen? Uh, so far, 
Not yet, no. Not, oh, yeah. Oh, Sorry. Oh, yeah, we're good. Uh, we're good. Back. Okay, we are getting there. Yeah. Yes, yes, thank yes. You. There we are. Thank you so much. Go ahead. Thank you very much, and um, thank you for the interesting presentation you gave, Florence. It was um, a new view. I don't, and we don't know Sierra Leone yet. Well, we are um, an NGO um, who works on uh, Comundos connecting uh, cooperation between worlds. It's rather uh, Spanish and Portuguese. And we, what we do is teach people about media literacy and have this short um, oversight of uh, what is media literacy, is about understanding how media is made and where media comes from, every media is colored. And uh, we give this uh, also in the form of a workshop on fact, uh, fact checking. In a second um, step, um, it's about using the, the equipment, if you can call it, it's digital inclusion, digital inclusion, knowing how, how to use a computer, knowing the difference between an operational system and applications. And what we do in a third step is about communication and what we teach in a workshop digital storytelling is about creating content and finding and processing information. Who knows that our participants later on use um, media to obtain their objectives as an organization, but also as an individual to find a job or um, those are some steps that we can say media literacy. Um, there are some other names and they overlap each other. Uh, we have some new abilities that we have to teach to teachers and youngsters all over the world. They are coming, um, they are being needed for, for jobs in the future. So we have this little workshop. Uh, we use media and information literacy through digital storytelling. At the same time, we practice and we start experimenting with the intercultural dialogues using uh, local contexts and uh, computers. Um, about the workshop. Um, so it's, it's a kind of masterclass that people learn abilities that I will uh, show later. We teach them how to brainstorm, how to, what to use from a brainstorm and use it in a story. They listen to each other, uh, each other's story to enhance it. And the uh, next step, is finding or, and, or taking pictures to and then enhance their story. And next step, they, they record the narrative that they've been writing, uh, their story. They put the background music, so now they know how to use a podcast or at least the basics. And at the end, we assemble everything in a video editing software depending we use open source uh, software for uh, for every step where needed and it depends what kind of uh, softwares we use depending on the, the computers and at the end uh, we present and do an evaluation so this is uh, a basic the, the basic uh, steps of, uh, of our kind of master class we have been giving this to uh, mostly rural in rural regions. Um, first, we worked with a, a network of agricultural schools. Um, the beginning was digital inclusion. We've sent several computers, um, first steps into technology um, through uh, digital inclusion. Uh, what to do with a computer who has no internet? Making stories. And then we, continue, we continued. Um, the stories were mostly worth listening to and uh, we will uh, i will give an idea so we went to all these continents and people have been uh, positive about what we do the challenge is how to insert technology in remote regions how will we be able to exchange experiences how can we be interculturally innovative and very soon everybody will be globally interconnected how can how are we going to lead with this um so it is good to be a bit media literate before everybody is, is connected and we mostly go in, um, in regions where they are not, not used yet. Um, we are using the SDGs as a framework 
to organize the stories. Well, these are contents that people want to talk about. I'm taking two examples. If you click on our website, one of the SDGs, we give an introduction in what the SDGs are and we organize their stories. Um, we categorize them in, in by SDG. And it really is what people want to talk about. Most of the stories, they uh, connect with one of these of these SDGs. At the same time, we are teaching people about transversal competences. Um, after after a workshop, we can ask to every we ask to uh, to participants, and they identify themselves that they have learned a lot of those. Uh, transversal competences or values, we can say about respect for the environment. In many stories, we have stories about, um, mostly about climate change and gender, um, man, many stories. It's about ethical and in, in, at the same time, we work on an intercultural understanding. And there is also a need, we are coming into time about tolerance and respect for diversity. Those are, I think those are, it's more about uh, the contents that are being produced. At the same time, we teach people about reflective, well, it is about reflective thinking, using creativity, giving some tips on, on how to make, um, take, how to, to different steps, how to get there. We teach them some basic communication skills, organization, organizational skills, teamwork, um, I'm not going to say them all, but uh, what is more important, it's about self-discipline. It's not easy at all to make a digital story. So digital stories are two, three minute stories uh, with some pictures, kind of photo story with a bit, with a bit of video in it. Um, it's about self-awareness also. Um, as it is education, we think it is also important that, um, that youngsters um, discover their talents. Um, if they like writing, if they like to play with technology, and so that they can discover themselves. Perseverance, as I said, it's um, it's a lot of work. It's a kind of uh, marathon, I would say, in a three, four day workshop, depends. Um, so, and media and information, finding information. Through the workshop, we touch, so we touch lots of uh, transversal competences. And so when we had uh, the framework set up together with pedagogical coordinators and directors from different schools, we started joining groups. Um, but it was also a very nice, and it is still a very nice network assignment. Uh, people get together, they learn, they listen to each other's stories, they learn about each other's um, realities. And so, in so we for, we taught teachers, but we also taught different publics that I will show later. Uh, teachers that at after the course they um, teach it to 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 the students in secondary level. It is we work normally from sixteen to from sixteen years old, um, a third grade um, that we call in Belgium. And so, and so it is like using communication as a pedagogical tool. They are not journalists yet, and they are not, it's just learning, and, and, but they love to, look, to work with technology. And this is a way to work with contents that have to be learned by and using communication. In uh, Cameroon, we, well, there was decided to use it contextualized ICT courses, and it, in a way it covers what we do using a computer um, by uh, working with local context, learning how to take pictures, and, and, and at the same time they learn so many, they learn about extensions and pictures and, and uh, the different formats by playing, and that is um, at the end what we want to do. We also do this in Belgium. We bring groups together that had uh, experiences that went on, that um, did a project or that that have something to um, systematize, I would say, to, to work out, to share with others. And we do this on a secondary level, but also every year on somewhere, university here in Belgium too. Um, that is an educational form. 
We have also been working on uh, twinning of cities, of towns, so that we brought together uh, Sydney Class is a town in Belgium who has been working over more than 10 years in Tambacunda in Senegal. And uh, we gave the course in Senegal, also a rural area. And afterwards we show, we, sh uh, we reflected uh, about their contents with the local uh, people at the municipality of St. Nicolas. The same we did in Benin. Um, in Benin, Merelbeke is a city in near Ghent, and to Kuntuna. Um, yeah, and everybody made stories at the municipality. Um, stories where we can learn from. As an example, if you do city twinning, it was about how what they did in uh, the local market, how and, and the projects that have been supported um, in their uh, twinning partnership. Like in the back, there are some uh, panels, solar panels that were also provided by the city of Middlebeke. And at the same time, by playing, we introduce the SDGs that are also a manual of um, kind of citizenship, we could say. Um, and now since two years, we have been all uh, been kind of locked up and we experimented full on with countries that have um, access to the internet. We have been uh, putting together, uh, well, in partnerships with, uh, with other municipalities bringing groups who speak Spanish together from all over the world, Mexico, Honduras, uh, Ecuador, there were some, uh, yeah, and Bolivia. So bringing people together to make this course and at the end everybody made a digital story and learned how media, um, and afterwards they look differently, how media is made and maybe discover uh, the talents. We also do this, we did this teaching um, teachers in for a secondary school in Brazil. And this was also, so we start on, uh, we keep on experimenting. This was six Brazilians, uh, five Brazilians and six Mozambicans who didn't know each other. We brought them together. They became a network um, and everybody made a digital story to learn from each other. And they are still in touch and, and in contact. Um, so to, kind of ending, we are sure that this is a pedagogical powerful tool to bring reflective and problem solving skills. It's, it empowers people by teaching them some basics on how to structure content. For youngsters, it's important about uh, for identity development, what can I say, what is being said, what, where to find information about sources and what is my proper opinion and therefore it's um, important for them. And at, um, and at the end, they look, we hope they look differently to media, which they do. They learn a bit more how media is made. And this can be a bit uh, kind of mellow, happiness and satisfaction, but we have been giving this workshop um, a lot of times in different cultures. And at the end, it seems that telling, telling stories from your own context uh, makes people happy. And it has been empirically proven. Before we started the program seven years ago, we have we read a, um, a study on this, and now we can say we can uh, testify that it is. Um, people can see our uh, evaluations of the courses if you want. And so, who knows? One day, uh, one of the stories gets picked up by conventional media, and and give more uh, visibility to each other. The, the stories are being are on YouTube. They are in create on Creative Commons uh, format and yeah, they get their own life. And people made for the first time uh, a little video of their own context by themselves. So that is, thank you very much for listening. <laughs>